Hello there folks. I just want to show you a quick video once again on how to set up the Turk BL20 or BL67 products to talk on Modbus TCP as a Modbus TCP slave. So I'm going to open up and use Codasys version 3.5 service pack 8 uh, and I'm going to start a new project right here. I'm going to select the standard project for my template. I could give it a name here but I'll leave it blank. I'll click OK. I'm going to use the BL20 PG-EN-V3 version 3. If I hit the pull down here, I can select other items, but that's the part I'm currently using. That's what I have currently on my desk. Click OK. All right, you can see it opens up some default settings over here on the left side. I'm going to first double click on the device over here to get my driver to talk. To the BL20 that's currently on the uh, desk here. So I'm going to click the scan network and it's going to go out and find anything with Turk's MAC ID, which it found here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that'll make that active right there. And that's that particular device on my table here. So that sets up the device configuration. I also would like to go scan the local IO just to see what's connected to the Turk BL20. So I'll double click here on the local IO rack. Actually, I guess I should right click is what I should do and scan for devices. It's gonna go out and it finds that I currently have four cards plugged into this, an eight digital in, eight digital out, eight analog in, and four IO with IO link on it. And let me go ahead and hit the copy all devices to project, which will then bring in all those particular slices. Excellent. So that takes care of setting up my local rack, but my goal here is really just to show you guys how to configure this thing as a Modbus TCP slave to have some Modbus TCP master device talk to it. So down here on the Ethernet part over here on the left, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me double click on this here to pick the interface we're using. And that is currently the IP address of my BL20 is 192.168.1.17. So I'll click OK to that. That sets up the Ethernet, but then underneath here, I'm going to add an object here, which will allow me to pick the Modbus TCP slave driver, in this case. Under vendor here, if you hit the pull down, you'll see there's all kinds of other vendors in here, but I'm going to stick with the Turk device, and I'm going to use the Modbus TCP slave here, and I'll click OK, or add device. And that should have added that to my system here. Matter of fact, here it is. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see it right here. If you notice here, uh, it's got 10 registers for holding and 10 input registers in the configuration here. So the holding registers here in this case uh, are, they call input words, and then the input registers are Qs, which will be the output here. Just notice the fact you got 10 and 10 by default. Turk supports up to 1,024 holding registers and 1,024 input registers. If you need to transfer more data than that with the Turk device, there's no other way to do it. it uh, in Modbus, 1,024 words input and 1,024 words output. One thing I have learned about this is that you should uncheck this because otherwise, if your master stops pinging or pulling the device after two seconds, the Turk device will automatically reset the outputs to zero. So I'm going to turn that off to keep it so it shows all the states. Now under Modbus TCP mapping right here, this is what I'm getting at here. The inputs here are what is coming into the particular BL20. And these are actually from the master will be the holding registers. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and name this Modbus underscore holding regs registers and then underscore 4K because these are the 40,000 series that are inputs coming into the uh, Turk uh, device here. And then down here under outputs, these are the registers that are going out to the Modbus master. So these are actually show up as the Modbus underscore analog input registers, which are the 3000 series. Let me do this. I'll just call analog input registers. Here's one more 3000 or 30,000 series. Those are the registers that are going to be uh, going to the Modbus master. 
So I want to try this out and see if it'll work here and see if you can see anything live. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my BL20 here. I'll download this particular code that I got running. And we're going to go ahead and notice the stop here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into the run mode right here. And I'm running. And I want to see the live data here. Oh, I forgot one step. Let me log out here real quick, guys. Um, one other thing you need to do here is this in the always update variables choose enable to in the bus cycle that way it's always getting refreshed so now let's try this and see if we can see it this time all right so here i am live looking at this and i happen to have a modbus master connected so if i go to the modbus master and put in some particular number into 40001 you can see right there that i put in that particular number there if I go ahead put a different number in or something you can see it change. So that is actually coming from the Modbus Master 40001 register that's showing up within the BL20. If I had some logic here to send something to a uh, to the Modbus Master, it would actually go out and show up as the analog input series, the 30,000, but I don't have any connected at this point. But So I just thought I'd show that to you real quick, team. The holding registers from the BL20 is gonna be output data, that is coming from a master to the BL20. And the analog input registers, the 30,000 series, will be what goes from the BL20 to the Modbus. Hope that uh, clarified some things. Hey, thanks a lot. Have a great day. See ya.